Refraction, as we said, is the process of light bending or changing direction at a surface. We're going to explore this uh, process a little bit further today and how it uh, changes images and the appearance of images in various things like lenses and, uh, and how we make telescopes and cameras and so on uh, using the process of refraction. If I were starting out in a medium like air and sending light into a medium like glass, and this, right, this line right here represents the boundary, light does a funny thing at this, at this boundary. As we noticed before, the light does not just transmit directly through the glass at the same angle as it was incident. In fact, the light changes direction. Just as with mirrors, it'll be convenient for us to define a perpendicular, which I've done with a dotted line right here. And always measure the angle of the light or the direction of the light with respect to that perpendicular line. So we're going to constantly be keeping track of where's the surface and then what is the direction that's perpendicular. Something like glass is usually more dense than something like air, and we will try to characterize the density of various materials, not in the same sense as the chemists uh, have defined density as mass per unit volume, but through something called the index of refraction. I'll say more a little bit about that about that in just a moment, but air, I may tell you, has an index of refraction of 1.0 exactly, and glass and most materials, in fact, have an index of refraction greater than one. Actually, only perfect vacuum has uh, 1.000. Air would be just a slight bit more than 1.0, so. Keep in mind that air even itself has a little bit larger index refraction than 1.0. But as we go from a large, uh, uh, from a low index material to a high index material, we will notice that the light bends toward the perpendicular, and we'll call this angle theta prime, or maybe it's best to call it theta out. This angle we'll call theta in. By that we mean the light coming into this boundary and the light leaving this boundary theta out. There's a very well-known uh, theorem in physics or empirical law, and it's known as Snell's law. And it says that the index of refraction on this side of the medium times the sine of the incident angle equals the second index of refraction on this side of the boundary times sine of theta out. Let's explore what that means just a little bit. If I am traveling from an, a material whose index of refraction is relatively small, let's say something like air or vacuum, which is pretty close to one, then this product it may be a certain size because n is 1 and the theta n is a certain uh, angle, I might shoot that light into the surface at a certain angle. But then because n2 down here is a bigger number, because we're shooting into glass, let's say, in order to keep this product of these two numbers equal t to the product of these two numbers, this has to be a smaller number, the sine of that output angle. As a result, if I think about what is sine of theta out, it is n1 over n2 sine of theta in. And if this ratio, n1 over n2, is smaller than 1, then this outgoing angle is smaller than that ingoing angle. And that's what happens when I go from something like air into something like glass. The angle actually got smaller, and that's kind of what we were seeing uh, a moment ago. On the other hand, if I send the light in straight in, like so, 
it will be more or less unperturbed. Why is that? Because in this case, sine of theta in is zero. If the angle incident is zero degrees, then the sine of that angle is zero degrees, and so zero has to equal zero, and sine of theta out has to equal zero. So this effect, this bending of light, really only takes place for angles of light that are away from the perpendicular. And Snell's law quantifies that for us.